Knock, knock. I'm Harvard dermatologist, Dr. Abby Waldman, and today we are going to dig down deep to discover the root cause of acne. So first, the key is actually understanding what causes acne in order to get down to the root cause. So understanding acne starts with understanding the hair follicle. Here's your hair follicle, and it has a little area around it that's connected to a sebaceous lobule. A sebaceous lobule produces sebum, it's your sweat. And normally, sebum is produced and it comes out and it provides like a nice little coating uh, and glow to your skin. In the case of acne, this follicle here is blocked and it can be blocked for many different reasons. The one reason is you may be producing too much sebum and that is creating a nice oily food for all the bacteria on your skin and that combined with just normal cells that are on your skin basically provide a plug and they block that hair follicle and they create these little comedones. So those can be whiteheads, blackheads. As the bacteria get more and more, your body is gonna react to them with inflammation. And that's what causes the redness and kind of pain and discomfort of a pimple. It's also what causes the pus that you can see when you're like, you know, squeezing those whiteheads and trying to get something out. That's your body's natural inflammation to the bacteria party that's going on. So most acne treatments target those two things, the bacteria and the sebum, the sweat. So drugs like tretinoin, adapalene, other retinoids, oral retinoids like Accutane, basically they kind of dry out the sebum. They block the sebaceous lobule. They'll also turn over the skin a little bit faster so you're not gonna get that plug of dead cells that are blocking the hair follicle. The other way to target acne is antibiotics. So whether it's topical antibiotics, benzyl peroxide, which kills bacteria, or oral antibiotics like doxycycline and minocycline that you might be prescribed for long periods of time, basically get rid of the bacteria party that show up. And these treatments really work, but they don't really get at the root cause, really what is causing that increase of sebum, what is causing those bacteria to proliferate or blocking the hair follicle. So how do you know? How do you know if this blockage of the hair follicle is really just your root cause and that's it. You know, there's nothing going on behind the scenes. You know, just blocking the hair follicle is the cause of your acne. So you might suspect that occlusion blockage is the primary root cause of your acne based on facial mapping. So occlusion is usually the culprit when it's something coming from the outside. So think like a violinist who is putting that violin pad on their chin every day and breaking out. Someone who drives for hours and they're occluding the sweat glands on the back, the hair follicles on the back, and you're getting breakouts. Someone who wears a lot of hair products and those hair products are occlusive. They're blocking the follicles and they're kind of trapping those bacteria and sebum, which are otherwise normal and causing the acne. Some people who wear really occlusive makeup, it can do the same thing. Those who work with petroleum products or cutting oils where there's these really thick, greasy oils that are getting on your skin, same thing. You can get acne just from having your skin physically blocked by something from the outside. So it's gonna take a little detective work, but generally you kind of know just based on sort of the distribution of your acne. So sometimes, you know, again, if it's hair products, it's usually gonna be kind of along the hairline, maybe on the back of the neck. If you have a really dirty phone that you're constantly putting on your face or a pillowcase that's dirty and blocking, it's usually gonna be on like one side if you sleep on one side. And again, if you have like a very niche occupation, like a violinist, you're gonna kind of know that that's what you do and that's where you break out. So the key here is usually once you remove the occlusion, you're going to fix the problem and the acne is going to go away. So if that fits you, great, you're done. Root cause found. If that doesn't fit you, keep watching because we are going to keep digging and find the root cause of your acne. So what about the bacteria? Are those ever the root cause? So we all have bacteria on our face. So most of the time, it's kind of a bystander. They're there always when you have inflammatory acne, but it's not usually the culprit. They kind of take advantage of like all this sebum to eat and play. They show up for the party. Your body's reaction to the bacteria is what causes the redness, but it's rarely actually the root cause of your problem. The exception to that is if you have been on every single acne medication, if you have been on tons of antibiotics, if you've tried Accutane, if everything is failing, 
you may consider that it is something that is not exactly acne, but is called gram negative folliculitis, meaning it's not your normal bacteria that are causing the problem. It's actually a bad bacteria that's usually um, in feces or other gram negative bacteria that should not be on your skin that have kind of taken over and oftentimes they're actually resistant to those antibiotics that you've been taking and they need very specific antibiotics to target the gram negative bacteria. Otherwise the acne is not going to go away. Again, if you are not responding to all the normal medications that are used to treat acne, you can also think about fungal acne. It's really, again, a folliculitis um, where the fungus kind of takes over and is not usually going to respond as well to your typical antibiotic treatments. It's going to respond better to antifungals. Okay. Have you found your root cause yet? If not, moving on to the next one. It's a big one and that is hormones. So it may come as no surprise that hormones is a primary culprit behind acne. So we have all sorts of different hormones in our body, but the ones that primarily regulate the sebaceous lobule are androgens. Those are male hormones. Androgen hormones stimulate the sebaceous lobule, which results in increase in sebum. There are also some other hormones that regulate, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So stay tuned. The main two male hormones that the sebaceous lobule responds to are testosterone and DHT. That is 5-alpha dihydrotestosterone. Try saying that five times fast. Dihydrotestosterone. I can't do it. And so again, it's gonna stimulate sebaceous lobule to make a ton of sebum. Bacteria are gonna show up to the party, jump in the swimming pool of sebum, inflammation, pimples. Now there's a natural cycle of androgens in the body throughout your lifetime. It actually starts right before age one and kind of peaks at age two. And so that results in infantile acne. Yes, babies can get acne. It will almost always resolve on its own by age two. Since androgens are low between age two and seven, acne is extremely rare. So if you have acne between age two and seven, it should actually prompt you to do a workup for some sort of hormonal imbalance, which can be an issue with the adrenal glands. It can be an issue with other sorts of hormonal regulation. So androgens, these male hormones, play a huge role in teenage acne because again, right as puberty is approaching, those androgens start spiking, and then you get more sebum produced by the sebaceous lobule, more acne. This is especially true in boys, which is why teenage acne is actually a little more prevalent in boys than girls at that age during puberty. But 85% of teenagers suffer from acne. So rest assured, it's totally normal and blame it on the hormones. The good news is, is that if hormones are your root cause, then the acne is going to resolve once your hormones stabilize. So meaning if you're getting a flare of acne during pregnancy, once your pregnancy resolves, meaning your baby is born, your acne will resolve. Same with once puberty is over, the hormones will regulate themselves. After age 25, hormonal acne is more common in women. It usually presents in the lower third of the face on the jawline, and it usually flares the week before your period. If you're a post-pubertal woman, meaning like older than 25, essentially, not a teenager. And you also have hirsutism, which is increased hair, or you have irregular periods or missing periods, then you should suspect PCOS or some other form of hyperandrogenism. So while typical acne medicines are going to treat this, even if you have hormonal acne, so antibiotics are still gonna work, you know, benzyl peroxide is still gonna work, tretinoin is still gonna work, there are some other medications you can consider and talk to your doctor about that actually address more of the androgen, more of the hormones, and that is spironolactone and oral contraceptive hormones if you're a woman. And both of those can decrease the circulating androgen hormones. Those can also be used in combination with some that treat the symptoms. There are some natural anti-androgen supplements and teas that have been shown to decrease androgen levels in the body. Those include sweet mint, green tea. More research is needed to really show if it really affects acne. That being said, anecdotally, a lot of people report that they see an improvement in their acne when taking sweet mint tea twice a day or green tea twice a day. Um, you do have to be careful if you're on birth control, pregnant, breast 
breastfeeding, any of those. So, you know, it's gonna be pretty easy to identify whether you have hormonal acne in that you're gonna be sort of in a hormonal changing state, right? A menstruating woman, a pregnant, a teenager during puberty, maybe you're taking testosterone for other reasons, you know, that's the same testosterone that increases the sebum. So if you're taking exogenous testosterone, you're gonna get more acne. So what if that's not you? Could hormones still be a cause of your acne? Sure. Your diet has a huge effect on your androgen hormones and stimulating your sebaceous lobule. And this is really common in America where we have really high sugary diets. Those with processed foods with really high glycemic index. What happens is they spike insulin. The spike of insulin can stimulate the adrenal glands to produce more androgen hormones. At the same time, insulin has been shown to actually reduce up the mopping proteins that you have that actually kind of come up and bind all the extra hormones and clean up hormones in your body. So insulin reduces the mop, the cleanup brush, and increase the androgen hormones. You have a double whammy effect on the sebacytes, the sebaceous lobule, and acne. Other foods that contribute to acne are cow's milk and whey protein that's derived from cow's milk. We don't really understand why that is, but it may just be from the hormones and the growth factors that are in cow's milk. You have to also be careful of the whey protein, which is in protein shakes, it's in protein bars. Um, you may be having them regularly all the time and just notice if that's causing more of a flare of your acne. So what if none of these seem to be the cause of your acne? You're like, look, I have a great diet. My hormones are normal. All my androgens are normal. Um, I clean my face. I don't, you know, use a ton of hair products. None of these are the causes. So what else could be the root cause? Is there anything else? And I mentioned before that we have several different types of hormones in our body. And we already talked about androgen hormones, but they're also stress hormones. And you probably have heard about cortisol. It's your main stress hormone. But when your brain is very stressed, like say either you're running from a bear or you know you have a big midterm coming up, your brain releases something called corticotropin releasing hormone. And that goes to work, getting your body ready to run from that bear as fast as possible. And so it causes the adrenal glands to release cortisol, but it also goes and it activates different organs, basically gets your muscles ready to run, get your brain focused. And it also gets your sweat glands going so that you can like sweat and run and run as fast as you can from that bear. So when you are stressed up here, it actually results in increased acne. And so it is not in your head that you get a pimple whenever you're studying for your midterms. So it's easier said than done, but anything you can do to reduce stress, you know, whether that's meditation or yoga or walking outside in nature, whether it is talking to a friend, moderate exercise, all different things, whatever works for you to really kind of reset, reduce stress, reduce the cortisol in your body, reduce the corticotropin, releasing hormone and kind of make sure you're not running from that bear all the time. And when none of these seem to be the cause, when in doubt, blame it on your mom. And genetics can affect any one of these. It can affect your androgen hormones or how you uh, react to androgen hormones. It can affect your insulin resistance, how you respond to foods that increase insulin. It can affect how your sebaceous lobule reacts to any of these things, including just how your immune system works to react to just bacteria and sebum building up. And a lot of times acne does run in families. Sometimes it can even go along with other syndromes. And so at the end of the day, genetics is kind of a black hole of explanation when we can't explain it any other way. Thanks, mom. So remember, everyone is different and what's one person's root cause is not another person's. And it's good to really think about all these aspects when trying to figure out the best treatment for you. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman, be well.